Hello everyone. So in our last lecture, we have studied that refraction of light is a phenomena which occurs due to different speeds of light in different mediums. Now there are so many mediums, so many materials in which light can travel. So it must have a different speed in all these mediums. So to differentiate one medium from another medium on the basis of the speed of light, a quantity known as refractive index has been defined. So a refractive index basically is an indication of the relative speed of light in a particular medium to that of the speed of light in a vacuum. It can be calculated, so refractive index can be calculated as the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in any particular medium. Mathematically, we denote the refractive index as the small letter n and it is calculated by the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in any particular medium. We can also represent this as n is equals to c upon v where c is the speed of light in vacuum and v is the speed of light in any medium. Now the value of refractive index for a particular medium is a constant value. Due to this, it is also known as the absolute refractive index. So this value of refractive index that we calculate is also known as the, refractive, as the absolute refractive index of that medium. Now the value of the absolute refractive index is always greater than 1. This is easily calculable. So we know that the speed of light is maximum in vacuum, right? So the absolute refractive index of any medium is given by the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum upon the speed of light in medium. Now since the speed of light in vacuum is maximum, the speed of light in any particular medium is always going to be less than the speed of light in vacuum. That is why the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in that particular medium is always going to be greater than 1. This means that the absolute refractive index of any medium is always going to be greater than 1. Now whenever light travels from one medium to another medium, if we take the ratio of the absolute refractive index of these two mediums, we get this ratio to be equal to the reciprocal of their velocities in those particular mediums. Let us try and understand this with an example. So let us take a glass slab that we have studied about in a previous lecture and we have light travelling from air to this glass slab. So the first medium in question in observation is air, right? So air becomes medium 1. And glass is the second medium. So glass becomes medium 2. Now if we take the absolute refractive index of air, we will denote this value as n1 and the speed of light in air as v1. So n1 is the absolute refractive index of air and v1 is the speed of light in air. Similarly for the second medium which is glass here, the absolute refractive index of glass will be n2 and the speed of light in glass is going to be v2. So here we have four different values, right? n1, n2 and v1, v2. Now if we take the ratio of n2 and n1, if we calculate these two values, we'll find this ratio to be actually equal to v1 upon v2, right? Because n1 is equals to c upon v1 and n2 is equals to c upon v2. So when we calculate the value n2 upon n1, we'll get this value to be equal as v1 upon v2. Now the value n2 upon n1 is actually known as the relative refractive index of medium 2 with respect to the medium 1. This can also be denoted as n21, where light is traveling from medium 1 to medium 2. So the value n21 is the relative refractive index of medium 2 with respect to the medium 1. And the value through which this refractive index can be calculated is the value v1 upon v2. So the value n21 which is the relative refractive index when light is moving from medium 1 to medium 2 can be calculated by v1 upon v2 or n2 upon n1. Similarly, the ratio n12 right, or n1 upon n2 is the value of the relative refractive index of the medium 1 with respect to the medium 2. And here light is travelling from medium 2 to medium 1. So this value can be given by the ratio v2 upon v1, right? So the ratio n1 upon n2 can be is equals to v2 upon v1. The ratio n1 upon n2 is also represented as n12, which is the relative refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2. So this is the concept of relative refractive index, where we have two different mediums and light is traveling from one medium 
to another medium and we have to use the relative refractive index where we can calculate the relative refractive index either n12 or n21 depending on where the light is traveling by the ratios of their velocities. So now why are we talking about the relative refractive index? If you recall in our last lecture, we studied about the laws of refraction. Can you recall the second law of refraction that we studied about? It was also known as, it is also known as the Snell's law of refraction. I'm sure almost all of you can recall that particular statement. So the Snell's law of refraction says that when, whenever light is refracting from one medium to another medium, at the interface at which refraction is actually happening, the, the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is always equals to a constant value. Well, this constant value is nothing but the relative refractive index of the medium 2 with respect to the medium 1. So, the, so in, if we talk about this particular case where we have light traveling from air to a rectangular glass slab, the ratio of sine i upon sine r is nothing but is equal to the value of n21 where the second medium is glass and the first medium is air. So the ratio of sin i upon sin r is actually equal to the relative refractive index of glass relative to air. So this is where the relative refractive index is actually used. Now there's one more important concept here that we should understand. The absolute refractive indices of some materials can be higher than the absolute refractive indices of some other materials. Right, so if we have two different materials or two different mediums, the refractive index of one of those mediums can be higher than the refractive index of the other medium. So let's say we have two mediums, medium one and medium two. And if we compare the refractive indices of these two mediums, we know that the refractive index of any medium can be given by the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in that particular medium. So we can say that if the refractive index of the first medium is higher than the refractive index of the second medium, the speed of light in the first medium should be lower than the speed of light in the second medium. So this gives us a relationship using which we can say that for any medium, if a medium has a higher absolute refractive index, the, sp the speed of light in that medium is going to be lower than any other medium. In other words, we can also say that if any medium has a high refractive index, light is going to travel slower in that particular medium. Now, if light is traveling slower in a particular medium, logically, we can say that the medium is denser, right? So if we have two different mediums and light is traveling faster in the first medium than in the second medium, we can say that the second medium is actually denser than the first medium, right? Now, this density has nothing to do with the mass density, right? This density depends on the speed of light in that medium. That is why we call this particular density as optical density. So if we have two mediums where the light is traveling faster in medium one as opposed to the medium two, we can say that the medium one is optically rarer as compared to the medium two or medium two is optically denser as compared to the medium one. Now we have two different relationships, right? We have the relationship between, between the refractive index of a material and the speed of light in that material. And we have the, the relationship between the speed of light in a material to the optical density of that material. So using these two expressions, we can easily say that for, an, for a material or for a medium which has a high refractive index, the speed of light has to be low in that medium, which means that that particular medium is optically denser. So we can say that higher absolute refractive index value it means that the object or the material that we are talking about is actually an optically denser medium. So this is the concept of optical density of any given medium, right? Higher the refractive index, higher is the optical density of the medium. Now let us talk about the same case, same example of, a, of light moving from air to a rectangular glass slab. So here we have that same case, right, of refraction where we have light moving from air to the rectangular glass slab. Now the refractive index of air is approximately equal to the refractive index of, of vacuum, which is equal to 1. So now 1 is the lowest value that the refractive index of any material can take. So we can safely say that air is an optically rarer medium. On the other hand, 
glass is an optically denser medium because it has a much higher refractive index value. Now observe the path that light takes when it moves from air to glass. Well, we can see here that when light moves from air to glass, which is an optically rarer medium to an optically denser medium, light bends or refracts towards the normal to the surface at the point of incidence, right? So when light is moving from air to glass in this case, which is an optically rarer medium to an optically denser medium, we observe that light moves or it, or it refracts in the direction of the normal to the surface at the point of incidence. Now observe when light moves out of the glass slab. So now in this case, we can see that when light is moving out of the glass slab, it is moving from glass to air, right? which is an optically denser medium to an optically rarer medium. Now observe the path of light. We can see that light bends away from the normal to the surface at the point of incidence. Right? So in this case, where, air, where light is moving from an optically denser medium, which is glass here, to an optically rarer medium, which is air here, light actually bends away from the normal to the surface at the point of incidence. So this is a very general observation and very, very general rule, which applies whenever light is moving from one medium to the other medium. So whenever light is moving from medium 1 to medium 2, where medium 1 is optically denser than the medium 2, the motion of light always follows this same rule. Right? So whenever light is moving from an optically denser medium to an optically rarer medium, light moves away from the normal to the surface at the point of incidence. And whenever light is moving from an optically rarer medium to an optically denser medium, light moves or refracts in the direction of the normal to the surface at the point of incidence. So this is a very general rule that we can apply throughout study of refraction of light. So now in this lecture, we have gone through some basic concepts related to the refraction of light, right? We have studied about the concept of absolute refractive index. We have also studied about the concept of relative refractive index. And we have seen some basic observation and some basic rules which help us in studying refraction of light. Now in the next lectures, next series of lectures, we'll talk about some advanced scenarios of refraction of light where we'll see how light refracts or how light behaves when it refracts from spherical lenses. See you in the next lecture.